Ninja Gaiden was one of my all-time favorite NES games. I'm sure you remember the SNES port, but did you know that there was a Japan-exclusive remake on the PC Engine? Today we're going to compare all three versions to decide which is the definitive version of Ninja Gaiden. This is Risky Bitness. When you think of the phrase Nintendo hard, there's a pretty good chance that Ninja Gaiden comes to mind. Known for its addictive gameplay and brutal difficulty, Ninja Gaiden is a true classic that is still enjoyed today. There are three versions of the game I want to talk about today. We won't be talking about the arcade version because I've already covered that in a completely different video and it's a totally different game. So let's start with the classic for the Nintendo Entertainment System. Ninja Gaiden known in Japan as Ninja Yu Kenden for the NES was developed in 1988, alongside its arcade counterpart by a different team within Tecmo. The development was led by Hideo Yoshizawa, who had previously worked on Mighty Bomb Jack. Yoshizawa also wrote the story and screenplay for Ninja Gaiden and went on to direct, write, and produce some lesser known titles for Tecmo and later Namco. Today, Yoshizawa considers himself a freelancer, and was most recently involved in the production of an animated film adaptation of the game Klonoa, on which he was a producer as well. The development team also included composer Keiji Yamagishi, who went on to score Onimusha Tactics and Streets of Rage 4, as well as starting his own chip tune record label, and artist Masato Kato, who worked on both in-game assets and the illustrations for the manual and cover art. Kato has also worked on various other projects for Tecmo and Square, including as a script writer and event planner, as well as a scenario writer. I don't know what any of those things are. These credits include Chrono Trigger, Final Fantasy VII, Xenogears, Chrono Cross, and Final Fantasy XI, quite a resume. Kato has also been a freelance writer and supervisor since 2003, and has worked on Baten Kaitos, Heroes of Mana, and the 2012 reboot of Ninja Gaiden 3. According to the book Power Up, How Japanese Video Games Gave the World an Extra Life, the console version of Ninja Gaiden was largely inspired by the platform action of the Castlevania series. Yoshizawa placed a deep emphasis on the story of the game, adding over 20 minutes of cutscenes. This was a really big deal at the time. We didn't see games like this in our living rooms back then, especially not in this distinctive anime style. The artists also wanted Yu to look distinctive, so they gave him a sleeveless top with some big beefy arms and a uniquely shaped hood. While the arcade beat-em-up was built on Tecmo's 16-bit arcade hardware, the NES dev team had a much more limited platform to work with. Because of this, a side-scrolling 2D platformer made a lot more sense than a brawler. Despite the limited processing power of the NES, Tecmo managed to make a fast-paced game that, for its time, looked very impressive. By using small character sprites and limiting the background details, they were able to keep the focus on action-packed gameplay. The North American localization has some comical errors, especially in the manual. Basakor? Kelbaroth? Leave a comment if you can guess what these names were intended to be. The soundtrack of Ninja Gaiden is also legendary, despite being limited to 5-channel wavetable synthesis audio. Can you believe this soundtrack is nothing but beeps? Ninja Gaiden tells the story of Yu Hayabusa, a ninja investigating the death of his father. Ryu quickly finds himself embroiled in a conflict between the CIA and an evil sorcerer who seeks to resurrect a demon by collecting two sacred statues. 
Ninja Gaiden is well known for its fast-paced gameplay where your ninja, you, runs to the right, sometimes to the left, while cutting down enemies between sections of tight platforming requiring precise timing. The enemies run the gambit from the mundane to the bizarre, including everything from boxers to dogs and cloaked figures that throw crosses at you. There's a linebacker that runs up behind you for reasons unknown. The knockback in this game is severe, and birds, bats, and those linebackers are always waiting just off-screen to ambush you mid-jump and send you plummeting to your death. The regular enemies don't seem like much, but the ways in which they're designed to thwart the hero are actually quite genius. They mostly serve to throw off your rhythm, causing you to collide with more enemies and become frustrated. The knockback can ping-pong you between multiple enemies, or bounce you into a wall that you will automatically cling to, making you unable to defend yourself. The later stages really ramp up the difficulty, with several screens whose enemy placement is just unreasonable. Often, the only way to get through these spots is with the Jump Slash, an overpowered sub-weapon that can one-shot most of the game's final bosses. However, beware. Power-ups are not placed in a way that is helpful to the player here. It is very possible, and very common, to accidentally pick up a worse sub-weapon than the one you currently hold, unless you already know what's in every single candle. There was a glitch in early versions where losing to any of the final boss's three forms would send the player all the way back to 6-1, where they would have to repeat the three hardest levels in the game in order to have just one shot at defeating the boss. Of course, this was fixed prior to commercial release. Just kidding, they left it in. What? <laughs> the SNES version was released in 1995 as part of the Ninja Gaiden Trilogy which featured updated 16-bit versions of the three NES entries. The remake fell flat, as it added very little to the original game. It is almost identical to the NES version, but with a better color palette and no flicker. The music does sound a bit different, but it's more jarring than it is. Not a lot to say about the SNES version. I'm sure it was nice at the time if you had an SNES but no longer had a working NES, but today I feel myself going for the NES version over the SNES version. Now I've saved the most interesting for last. I only recently found out this exists and was really pleasantly surprised at the PC Engine version. I recently covered the history of the PC Engine, known in the US as the TurboGrafx-16, in another video. The PC Engine version was published by Hudson and was a much bigger upgrade than the SNES version, although it came before the SNES version by three years. All the assets look brand new, both during gameplay and during cutscenes. This version is much more colorful, using the PCE's impressive 512 color palette. It's much brighter and the colors really pop. The more powerful 16-bit graphics of the PCE also produce more detailed enemy sprites and backgrounds. Look at these dogs, they actually look like dogs. It's awesome. The only really bizarre change, however, is the parallax scrolling. It looks really strange, almost like one of those old plays where the scenery moves on a treadmill. It's almost like the background is moving while the player is standing still. It's cool that it has scrolling, but it's just executed really, really poorly here. It's almost nausea-inducing. While this version was released only in Japan, the language of the cutscene dialogue can be switched to English or Chinese by using a cheat code. The script is somewhat different from that of the NES version with less censorship. As we all know, Nintendo of America was very big on keeping things as family friendly as possible, and they omitted anything even vaguely resembling a cuss word or a religious reference of any kind. Some character names are also changed, like the name of Ryu's father. Some of the localization mistakes from the NES version are fixed or omitted entirely. Many gameplay tweaks were made to bring the difficulty down to a reasonable level. While 
Easier than the NES version, this game is still very hard, so they kind of failed in that regard. For example, while enemy placement and concentration has been modified, the jump slash is no longer overpowered and enemies can still hit you while you're in the air, even when you have the flame ring. Some other notable changes are that the ninjas on jetpacks in the later levels only throw one shuriken, unlike the 3 to 5 on the NES version. Enemies respawn at more reasonable rates, and the notoriously hard level 5-3 has been completely redesigned to be less... completely insane. You can also keep your sub-weapon when you pick up the fire wheel, which means there's no longer any downside at all to picking up this particular power-up. On the other hand, the final boss is way harder, especially in its second form. Whereas flames stay on screen for a really long time and there's nothing you can do to get rid of them, except just keep moving until they disappear. The third form is even more insane. Instead of just shooting projectiles out of his head that can be dodged, they stay on screen and continue bouncing and moving around until you cut them with your sword. It's way harder. Other changes outside the difficulty include a change to the statue so that they are no longer missing their right claw for some reason, and the next level screen no longer appears in the middle of a cutscene like it did on the NES. The cloaked figures now throw axes instead of wooden crosses, and many enemies have had their colors upgraded. Let's have a look at the PC Engine version, contrasted against its NES counterpart. And now, let's take a look at the PC Engine version with the SNES version. Finally, let's take a look at all three together so we can really see the differences. While the PC Engine had additional audio channels, these were not put to the greatest use. The soundtrack is entirely different from the NES predecessor, and it's, it's just not as good. I think it's pretty obvious that the original will always be held in high esteem as the definitive version of the game. But for me, I really enjoy the enhancements the PC Engine version has made. I think that this version is absolutely worth a playthrough and I strongly recommend it. It's certainly my favorite version. Thank you for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this comparison. Please join me next week when we look at the Ninja Gaiden for the Sega Master System and the ill-fated Genesis port. Until next time, game over.